Welcome, my dear ones. This is Tracy Anderson Askew, your host for the Transform Your Birth podcast, changing your mind about birth one story at a time. Each week, we'll be exploring a birth story through the lens of what birth can teach us. I'll be digging deep into each story so you can learn what it is that can change the way a birth unfolds. We can't control birth, but we can influence it. So listen in to find out how. Enjoy. Phoebe decides to have a home birth late in her first pregnancy. She experiences a long labour, a transfer to hospital, and then unable to have her midwives with her because of COVID. She has her second baby at home, and then needs to transfer after the birth to get some extra medical support. Phoebe reflects on both experiences and what made all the difference when adapting to the changes. She shares with us how motherhood has changed her and her need to control. Such wisdom and insight into how birth and motherhood change us forever. Enjoy. Welcome everybody. It's another week of the Transform Your Birth podcast and with me today is the lovely Phoebe. And Phoebe has been with me prepared. Um, with both of her births and I love having a person with um, both births on because we often learn things the first time that we change for the second time. So let's draw that out of Phoebe. Welcome, darling. Hello. Thank you for having me. Mm, It's good to see you. All right, Phoebe, you were pregnant with baby number one. Tell us um, what your model of care was and why you chose that. Let's start there. So we started in, uh, I guess, shared care between the hospital and uh, our family GP. Um, and we were ticking along with that because that was all we knew. And, um, you know, I had to chase up appointments. Uh, I was hoping to get into the um, continuity of care program and was told, sort of from early on that it was likely that I would, um, that I was young, um, healthy, sort of fell into the category of a a, a simple pregnancy Um, and so sort of held out hope for this continuity of care model. Um, And it wasn't until I was about 27 weeks that I was told, oh, no, you never actually stood a chance of getting into it. You live out of area. Um, I think that was the beginning of doubt for me of, oh, well, you know, one person saying one thing and another saying another. Anyway, we ticked along and, of course, um, in the next couple of weeks, COVID became a thing um, and slowly began to impact um, our experience with the hospital system, public um, hospital system. Um, And I think the biggest thing for me that made me go, hang on a second, this is not going to work, is um, Zoom birthing classes. (laughs) And uh, we sort of went to attend our first Zoom class and we were like the crash test Mm -hmm. dummies. This wasn't a thing. It had never been done before. So we, you know, sitting at home, we log into the computer and, oh, sorry, we can't get it to work. Um, We'll see you next week. And, of course, you know, when you're getting to those later stages, it's like every week Mm -hmm. kind of counts. Um, Anyway, we, I think we just, must have done a couple more weeks and then um, my husband had been listening to a podcast and I tried to get out of him this morning what one it was but he couldn't specifically remember and he came home one day and said to me what do you think about doing a home birth and uh, I don't know if I can swear but (laughs) sure uh, you can you can imagine what I said to him I told him he was a fucking idiot and that hospitals (laughs) exist for a reason (laughs) Um, and I think it was just pure, like the perfect demonstration of how we go like, no, you can't have a baby at home. Like you've got to go to the hospital and this is mm-hmm. the way it happens. And anyway, didn't think an awful lot more of it. And then um, we came along to your course and um, 
we sort of we had had a few sort of conversations about it but it was nothing set in stone um and we'd asked you about you know what do you think he gave us a card and um coincidentally my mum had already given us the number of one of the midwives and um you know being mum's advice I was kind of like ah I, it's fine thanks mum I'll I'll reach out if I need to anyway so we ended up um deciding to get them around have a coffee um it's kind of a no strings attached appointment um and so this would have been about I think it was maybe like 34 weeks wow yeah 34 35 so pretty late on in the piece really to change everything um anyway they turned up and I had my book of questions and um they answered every single one of them and um the agreement was you know we'd touch base in a couple of days and see what we thought and it was sort of I think within a day or so that we went yep let's just do it um and got the list of all the stuff we needed to buy and yeah then then began our continuity of care um can you can you reflect on phoebe what it was that flipped your perspective from <laughs> you fucking idiot <laughs> to okay let's do this what what shifted it I don't I don't know and I think it was more a lot of conversations around you know scenarios of okay we turn up to the hospital and it's just us anyway so you want this one continuous person that you know when you feel really mm-hmm. comfortable with yeah then we can make that happen for ourselves. Um, And I think my biggest fear all along was being, you know, we were a a 25, 30 minute drive from the hospital at the time, from Canberra hospital. Um, You know, a lot can happen in that space at the time. Um, But knowing that actually they had more equipment on hand than possibly an ambulance would to help with a baby. Mm. um was like okay well that's pretty reassuring um so I think it was like a lot of the questions and answers and yeah I I, I don't know what the the pivotal moment was that changed Mm. my mind more just a you know a lot of conversation and yeah I I really dreaded the idea of driving to the hospital and knowing when to go and I think that Mm. was also part of it just oh well we can just be at home um yeah yeah it's that continuity of a known care provider which creates relationship between the family and the carer is gold standard really because having a relationship, getting to know each other, being able to ask questions, having those questions answered patiently, respectfully, um, just can really reassure people. And and having your own midwife at home, you know that she's only looking after you, nobody else. She's there yeah. completely for you. And even travelling from home to the hospital is a di- disturbance of birth. So I can see why you might have done that. Okay, so let's fast forward. You've decided to have a home birth. You did some preparation. What sort yeah. of um, preparation did you do that you that felt really made a difference to how you went through that experience? I probably, no, not probably. I know if I could go back and do that again, I would have done a lot more preparation. Yeah. Um, we knew that she was posterior Mm -hmm. um and so I think I just kind of was a bit you know ignorance is bliss she'll turn be fine you know I've looked at spinning babies and done a little bit of the exercises here and there but probably yeah just assumed that um it would work out and I did I did do um I listened to your recordings but uh you know each 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 day or every couple of days but probably not as often um as I should have 
and um yeah I think I I was fit and so I assumed that you know oh, I'm fit and healthy I was riding horses up until just shy of 36 weeks so mm -hmm. well, it'll be fine um thinking more it was like a <clears throat> physical thing than a mental thing as well mm -hmm. um and I think yeah I, I I definitely could have done more preparation. Mm. Yeah. That's how you learn. Yeah. 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 And there's yeah. No, nothing's yeah. ever in vain. You know, I, I don't think it's helpful really to shoot on yourself, but to see in hindsight what could have made the difference. So helping that little one to spin. Now, sometimes through the Spinning Babies website or other programs that help reposition babies, these are things we can sometimes influence, but we can't control. Ultimately, we can't control. And what ends up happening on the day is what happens on the day. So yeah. tell us about your birth, your first birth. So she, yeah, she was posterior. Um, and so on the 15th of April um, at, oh, it was like 4 a.m., something like that. I got up to wee in the morning and uh, there was a little trickle. Um, and so I'd had a, like, a few niggles here and there. Um, but I also was a bit like, what is this? So I text Ali and um, she's like, it's all right. That's a good sign. Head back to bed, rest, get as much rest as you can. Um, and so we got up in the morning, kind of, just another day <clears throat> rested but also like that first birth the excitement of oh it's gonna happen and it's gonna be really quick and you know this is it I think yeah the sun came up it wasn't gonna happen while the sun was up um we kept the house like pretty dark but went for a walk just sort of edged out we made some soup the best um pumpkin soup ever which I've never <laughs> been able to make so good <laughs> um and then yeah I think once the sun went down it um that was when it began again for me that interesting um yeah and ah we have little Flo who's joining us now Phoebe's youngest daughter so you the, so, the labor dwindled during the day, so typical. Then it yeah. kicked off again at night. Then what happened? Yeah, and then it was pretty slow. Uh, just chilled on the um, the ball, the exercise ball, and um, was pretty frustrated. Checked the time constantly. Um, really found myself watching the time timing contractions feeling like nothing was progressing um spoken spoken like a true athlete yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> getting I think caught in control that freak in me was, <laughs> yeah. yeah it was just like you know this this yeah. isn't how it should be there should be more yeah um it did progress a bit and and um so use the tens machine which um I've had a really positive association with TENS machines having had um, Achilles issues. Yeah, so cool. for me, that was a really uh, having the TENS in my tool belt was just I knew I had this one thing that had been really important to me early on in life in relieving, um, you know, feeling of, of tightness in um, my Achilles. And so... Yeah that was the reason behind really wanting to use one. Just tell um, us quickly, so we, Phoebe, how did you, like, how did you experience the sensations with the TENS machine on? What was that like? Um, so I had a lot, it was like every contraction tightened with the posterior positioning right around my entire lower back and then my entire front, like mm. really, uh, it wasn't, wasn't like a it was a very different sensation to my second labor yeah. um and so I found the tens machine just really helped to not mask but uh 
felt like a relaxing, a bit more relaxing, like it was a cool. um, like a distraction yeah. more than anything um, from the tightening and it was more the feeling of the tens. Yeah, nice. Um, Good to hear. It was a glitchy tens, a glitchy tens which had a, a, a uh, dodgy cord on it, so we had to do a bit of taping up and in the end I cracked the shits, <laughs> but it was still there working when it could, but that was more frustrating than like almost not having it, I think. Oh, wow. Um, but we then moved to the shower um, thank goodness for instant gas, uh, where I spent a good couple of hours. Um, I really had wanted to use the bath. Um, we had a really, really big bath, um, but I knew in my head that's a good half hour to fill that, 20 minutes, 30 minutes to fill that bath up. Um, and I wasn't patient enough to wait. <laughs> um, so after a long while in the shower, uh, I'm talking over 24 hours since the beginning at this point. Um, we had a discussion with our midwife about perhaps transferring. Mm -hmm. um, she was conscious of uh, where I was at, being tired, and that there was still the pushing to come. Yeah. Um, she, my waters had broken, but I was still about five centimetres um, and had been for quite a while. Um, so she gave us ten, some time to chat and after about 10 minutes we decided off we go, climbed in the car um, and in true style went through transition going down the Monero Highway uh, <laughs> in peak hour traffic heading to the hospital oh, <laughs> as wow. you could imagine so it was um not a good car riding um but yeah by the time we got to the hospital it was um basically I was ready to start pushing um or soon after um but I think the hardest part of actually reaching the hospital was the COVID restrictions that were enforced and then having our midwives have to leave mm. um and so we got there um and they allowed them to sorry that's really emotional they allowed them to come up with us into the room yeah and they were incredible because we only had one at home and this um so ali was with us at home and mel had met us at the hospital so we got there and it was like this, we were like it was it felt like this perfect team. I had Ali was filling in the hospital on the notes and the um, admin side of it, and then Mel was applying pressure to my back and hips, which was really helping. With mm. I could just feel like every contraction. It was like the baby coming down. Um, and right as I was like, oh, the classic. I think I need to go to the toilet. Um, they basically said that they had to leave. Um, and so they were both gone. And so it was just Jaith and I, and I think we were both a bit sh like shocked because we'd kind of gone from having them there and they'd allowed them to come in and hand over everything, but not to, we were so close to the end, mm. maybe well you know, in the scheme of things, um, to not even just allow one. Wow. Because um, it was incredibly one. Incredibly difficult, Phoebe, because um, the, the, it doesn't make sense. They're already in there. What's the point? Yeah, of exactly. That? Yeah. And it was um, right on shift change. So it worked for them to have um, our midwives there to help me mm. while they did shift change. But once... Um, everything was done um, and they changed shifts. That was it. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, they were unable, they were struggling to get readings of heart rates and using the um, monitors. And I'd gone from with our midwives there um, being uh, from on the side of the bed to leaning over the bed on my knees mm -hmm. um, to being told to hop onto my back 
and um, the stirrups and in came someone in a vacuum cuff and it all kind of went a bit crazy quite quickly. Um, so, yeah, it was a, ended up with a um, vacuum and a um, episiotomy. Um, and then, yeah, that was, oh, that, that was the uh, first one. When you look back at that, Phoebe, the process of transitioning mm. to the hospital, which yeah. may, like, it's always a difficult thing to make that sort of a call for a home birth midwife. She's got to, home birth midwives tend to caution on earlier rather than later. And when you've got a posterior yeah. labour, babies are not in ideal positions and they can come sort of a larger portion of their head is sort of presenting, which is why dilation can be so slow. So that was a really difficult call to make to get you a little bit more help. But, of course, on the way you really started to progress by then and yeah. then told you couldn't have your midwives. Do you feel like that played a role in that second stage and needing help to get her out? I think so. And, of course, they debriefed, um, so I didn't realise they'd gone down to the cafe downstairs and were waiting mm. um, in case there was any change and they were able to come up. Um, and they debriefed after and obviously we all, you know, have spoken after and we think, you know, could have been possibly different. Um, mm. Even, you know, if we have still transferred um, but also I think yeah it goes from you feel not not fully you know you're never fully in control of your labor but having you know mentally some control to mm -hmm. sort of and con having the control of who was there which was really important to me to mm -hmm. then not having them um, and even the things of you know having my hips you know the pressure on yeah and squeezing of my pelvis and those sorts of things losing those which can help Rotate. bringing the baby down mm, and everything that's right. yeah. yeah um so yeah i think mm. it could have changed and yeah. we do wonder if we'd have we sort of say if they'd have known us longer um you know maybe we might have had more of a relationship to stay at home longer yeah. to try a few different things, but we were all sort of really only a couple of weeks into knowing one another. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, the, I don't, uh, I don't consider it traumatic. I think the saddest part for me is that they had to leave the room. Yeah. Um, which, um, you know, I would have loved for them to have been there for that mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's now look at baby number two's on the way. And yep. you decide to have another home birth. Yep. I um I text Ali at uh once my dating scan was done and said, um, do you have some availability for <laughs> April uh twenty twenty two? She was like, Yep. So there was no question. Um <laughs> was it was just straight away that's the path we were heading down. Yep. Um, we'd moved house, so we were in, you know, we, we'd sort of, people had said, oh, why don't you consider the, the hospital home birth? Because we were, we would have been within um, the right distance and probably would have gotten into continuity of care, but we just went, no, nah, we just want the same, same yeah. people. Um, yeah, so locked in alley and off we went on that journey again and there's something really special about having being in the comfort of your, your own home and the dog at your feet while you're lying on the couch and the toddler squished up next to you while you get your heart you know baby's heart checked and your stomach measured and yeah not not having to leave the house and <laughs> rush to things and you know I could work from home and it could be lunchtime sometimes or yeah it was just so so easy mm. Mm -hmm. beautiful so how did they slay the prep did you did you do any prep for this one oh I did some prep all right so I started the <laughs> recordings at um about 14 weeks 
and we would joke, are we going to be lulled to sleep by Trace tonight? And <laughs> off we'd go listen to <laughs> We'd both listen to them. Um, so we started them really early and then um, we, yeah, just a lot more. Uh, I, I saw a, um, a physio, so I saw like a, a women's physio for pelvic floor and everything and I saw an exercise physio to get some really good exercises to help with strengthening. You know, I wasn't doing the horse riding and stuff as much um, to strengthen like the specific areas that you often um, use more during labour. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, really, really invested in um, the prep this time. And I think uh, probably connected more with the pregnancy. I was far less selfish, I think. It was more about um, I, I really I really wanted it to happen at home and having, I think, had a hospital transfer, I just was like, it's, it's not going to happen again. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, just really put put the time and the effort into mm. looking after me and, um, you know, prepping food for the labour so that we had, like, meals and stuff. And, yeah, just very different this time. Yeah, it so, it's so fascinates me to watch women change as they go through this path of, you know, having their babies, however many they have, and each experience feeds into the next one and so your priorities were much more based in you know the baby and yourself and looking after yourself and making sure as the conduit for this baby to enter into the world you were more prepared both mentally doing the practices but also physically that's really wonderful so let's fast forward to the actual birth tell us about baby number two so um kind of freakishly it was um around the same time of the morning the same sort of thing except this time I got up to um Evie had woken so she was two just over two um and we've always when she wakes she just comes into bed with me and Jay can pop into the spare bed so same thing I sort of said to Jay can you just get her and get her into the bed and I'll um tidy myself up and just message Ali um same thing yeah get get some rest but there was something really special about probably good for the labor actually hopping into bed and being like this is the last time we kind of have this special oh a little flow you need something hopping into bed and sort of knowing this might be the last time that it's just us. Yeah. And so really just like cuddled up and enjoyed those last few hours. I I actually slept on and off. I had some tightenings here and there. Um, And then, yeah, we, so we had arranged um, just because of her age, I didn't, would have loved to have had her around but I think it would have been too much for her mm. um and so my mum came and got Evie the next morning um and same sort of thing we just potted around the house and kept it quite dark watched love actually <laughs> napped <laughs> ate food like you know good foods and soups and stuff that was sort of easy mm. um and then we once things sort of started again, once the sun went down, um, I had in my head, as soon as the sun goes down, it's going it's to be on. And so we set up the birth space um, and hung fairy lights and I had a bit of a, um, we called it the birth shrine in our bedroom. <laughs> it's just photos and some bunting and some mantras and stuff um, that we then moved out into the lounge room and um, set up. Uh, the one thing I was really uh, knew would be a um, worry point for me was having the pool set up. Um, and so basically Jake just kind of set that all up and kept setting things up and I just 
sort of was in this den in our bedroom with a ball and red light and music and just in the zone, really mm. in the zone. Um, and Jake was amazing because he would just come in and check, say the right things and here's some water. Um, and he could kind of tell once things were progressing a little and put the tennis machine on and why don't you listen to some of Trace's recordings and, you know, put them in my ears. And But I was adamant I did not want to look at the time. So we had mm. covered clocks, um, even my phone, like when the recordings would finish, I'd yell out to him and he'd come and put another one on. And, um, that was how much I didn't want to see what time it was, how many hours yeah. it was. Very different. Um, yeah, just fully surrendering. And around midnight, I said, I don't know if she's moving as much. Like I I think, you know, she was moving quite a bit before, but she's settled. It's getting kind of late, you know, thinking I was in for the long haul. Um, so I asked if he could reach out to Ali and she could come and um, have a look, just check, and then that way she could um go home and get some rest <laughs> yeah um and so she came and so and so um yeah i i felt a bit uh like i had said to both jace and ali oh i feel like things aren't progressing much and you know, I'm very, I, I was really worried that we were going to end up in the same situation as before. And, um, yeah, I, I, I just felt like it was just ticking along, but not, not progressing. Um, anyway, Ali just sort of sat and watched and, yeah, you know, it was never like a, I don't know, this is what I always loved is, is it was never, in a, you know, she didn't come and be like, yeah, you're right, you know, or no, it's fine, it's 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 going to be fine. It was just like, all right, okay, like very calm and I did feel a bit more at ease knowing that, um, you know, like Florence's heart rate was fine and mm. everything was, you know, okay. Um, and... I stood up because they the, the contractions were getting quite intense, and um, Ali did this thing where she like squeezed my hips and kind of like shimmied, and I felt this like boom, <laughs> and yeah, it was. I was like, oh, but it was like so good at the same time, mm. and um, anyway, I I don't know how much time passed in there, but. Um, after a while, uh, she'd said, did you want to try the pool? Because I felt like the TENS machine wasn't really doing much for me then. Um, so I came out to the pool and, oh, my God, I was hanging for this bath, right, because I love a bath and we did, we have, like, this house has the smallest bath ever. Um, and so I really, in my head, was just like, I can't wait to have this bath. <laughs> <laughs> and so I got in and was just like, oh, it's so good. The temperature was perfect. It just felt weightless. And I don't know how long I was in there, not long at all, maybe 10 minutes. And I just felt this and my waters broke. And um, Ali sort of came by and was like, you might feel... I can't remember specific, like exactly what she said, but I remember in my head being like, it's just the most beautiful way to work things. She said, um, you might feel the wave of each sensation a little stronger now, or something, it was something like that. Mm -hmm. And she was right. But with, so I'd obviously taken my AirPods out by this time and it was just, it was just there. Um, and it was so fascinating because every time I had this feeling of like, oh, God, 
this is too much. This like subconscious thought just came in and smashed it and was like, this is fine. It's just transition. And so I just had this amazing experience of every time I wanted to say or think that, you know, this is too much, I can't catch a break or um, anything, I it never actually made it out of my mouth because mm. my subconscious had stepped in and beautiful leveled me out yeah. and so it was just yeah I I'm so glad that I did listen to those recordings that's as it. much as I did yeah um, that's, that's so um a, a great example of how they work so the subconscious mind is what holds our beliefs and our perceptions around life and and birth and how you think about birth will influence how your body responds to birth. So if you've spent, in your case, weeks and months brainwashing yourself, and I often use it in a positive way, though you're washing out the old beliefs and the TV shows and other people's stories and you're planting in new beliefs, which is, oh, no, we can do this. You've got this. Yeah. 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 The subconscious is right there and you've harnessed your mind and your mind has learned to work with the birth, not against it. Is that how you explain? And I think it was, yeah, and I think it was extra incredible because, um, as I'd said to you early on, I always just fell asleep in the recording, uh, in the in the practices. Yeah. And so um, the fact that your mind really does soak them in, even though you are asleep, yeah is yeah just fascinating but it was yeah really really um amazing just to have my mind really overpowering yeah what i was thinking um uh so yeah my my waters broke in the pool and uh i wasn't in there for long all of about 40 minutes or something all up but uh, I was reading the notes earlier and it was Ali had called um, Mel, the other midwife, to come. I think it was like 1.40 or something. Uh, and then by because I was sounding pushy and by uh, 1.50 you could see the head at the end of a contraction and yeah. by 1.53 she was born. Um, wow. and Mel arrived to me already having a baby and it was um yeah pretty pretty cool yeah wow in in the birth a... pool in the lounge room oh, how <laughs> lovely can I ask you a question did your midwives give you any vaginal examinations no not oh. at all in my not in my second birth in the first Yes, um, but it was only after very, um, you know, like it was very consensual and it was yeah. a conversation of why and, and, and um, the reasoning behind it. Mm. And it was, um, yeah, it didn't. But I think because I had that level of comfort with them as well, I, you know, I, I'd say, you know, I, I got my best kid on for you when I'd go to get in the shower and I was, was happily naked in that sort yeah, of thing. So cool. I think yeah. it was, um, you know, that level of comfort and respect, mm -hmm. um, mutual respect sort yeah. of. Uh, I ask the question um, because a lot of women um, can experience many, many vaginal examinations and vaginal examinations in their own right disturb the process of birth. They require a woman to get out of whatever position she's in of comfort, or hopefully comfort, to then put her on a bed and be quite exposed, be quite vulnerable and then have a gloved hand, either a midwife or a doctor can do it, to check where she's up to technically, I guess, in labour. But a good midwife like Mel and Ali could tell just by looking at you and looking at little signs. They watch how your, your pelvis expands and and the sounds that you make and all sorts of things. And they, and they develop an intuition around babies coming down so yeah. i think it's a powerful thing to remind people that vaginal examinations are not a medical necessity you can go through a whole yeah. labor and not have one however there are certain circumstances where it might be appropriate 
And that's a good question to ask your carers is under what conditions would you want to do a vaginal examination? Mm. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was, it was, so then, yeah, we just, um, Florence came out hungry. She is, she lo- she's a boob lover. So she came out and was feed- <laughs> basically straight away onto the boob. Um, yeah. And it wasn't until I hopped in the shower, which was about two hours later. So I didn't realise that much time had passed. Um, and so they did the delayed cord clamping and um, mm. the placenta had come out basically right after she was born. Yeah. Um, and when I was, it wasn't until I was in the shower that we, um, I began to feel quite faint. Mm-hmm. And so I just yelled out, um, not feeling that great. I'm just going to sit down in the shower. And Mel came in, got me out of the shower and lay me down in bed. Um, and that, that was when it sort of realized, well, yeah, it wasn't until I'd obviously gone from being like laying down and sitting on the couch to upright in the shower that then I started to bleed. Yeah. Um, So they had everything here to stop the bleeding um, and contract the uterus and everything. Um, But I had a second degree tear um, and so they'd phoned an ambulance. um, The ambulance came and... So there was a hospital transfer for a postpartum hemorrhage and for the tearing to be sutured. But even in all of this, I think this was the probably the biggest difference between between, um, the two births, and that is that (laughs) Florence is making a sorry. She's got yeah. the loudest possible toy in the house. <laughs> um, having a great is job. Is that we had spoken so many times of after Evie was born, how Jason came with me to have a shower and we left Evie with the midwife out in the, in the basket thing out in the room. And we made it very clear to each other this time that if anything happens, Jason stay with the baby. There was plenty of expressed colostrum and that sort of thing. And Ali stayed with me. And that meant that Florence was always with one of us. And I had someone who I knew would also be able to really make sure that I knew what was going on and explain yeah. things. And yeah. um, So we transferred to hospital. Ali and I went in the ambulance with Floss. Jace drove and met us there um and once we got to the hospital and jace arrived he took florence like we were in birth suite um and they were sort of pushing to send us through emergency um but ali was really good in sort of saying well that doesn't really make sense let's can we just try and get to birth suite um and so that's where we ended up um and Ali was with me whilst they did the stitching, which was like this most weird experience ever um, because they gave me the gas. Um, And all along, they everything that they did, I instead of being like, oh, I want pain relief or something, I felt more like, but what does it do for the baby? Which is felt like such a difference between the first and second births um and so that i had the green whistle when they'd arrived because the um i don't know what it's called but what they give you to um make the cervix go down was like insane um and yeah so i took the the green whistle but it was more only because I knew that it wasn't going to affect the baby. And then mm. once we got to the hospital, the gas wouldn't affect the baby. And so, um, yeah, but w- with the gas, it was um, this very surreal experience of um, I was just bawling my eyes out. 
and it was like I was I just felt as though I was having this experience of being our toddler and not being able to talk or express myself but just being there and trying or wanting to like everything was there in my mind but I couldn't convey anything it sounds so like a bit of a um, reaction of feeling quite scrambled and a bit all yeah over. it was mm. such a strange um, experience but um, Ali was incredible um, the doctor who'd come to do the stitching had asked for consent and um, I'd sort of just obviously not given a very clear indication and Ali had sort of gone like no hang on a minute and explained again to me and until I gave a very clear yes nothing started and so um, it's just this amazing feeling of having someone really advocate for you and Mm. I don't doubt for a second that Jace could have done that but knowing that Florence was with him and she was safe and being cuddled by her dad and then I had this care Mm. was Mm. yeah it was just so special. Phoebe it sounds like from the experience of becoming a mother of your first baby was one level of experience and then with your second baby you seem to tune into yourself and the baby more deeply is that what I'm hearing I think so yeah I mean I was very not a control freak but I really liked to have schedule and rhythm and Mm. well not even rhythm routine to my life Mm. and leave by x time and get home at x time and it just doesn't work like that now and (laughs) um it never did um and I mean two completely different kids and completely different personalities but um I think I I sometimes feel a bit like I lost myself when I had our first baby and not you consumed by motherhood and Mm. everything I did before for me and who I was kind of felt like it didn't exist and um, then I almost feel like I've sort of found myself with the second in that none of that does matter Um, you've let that one day it'll come back, but mm. it's not worth worrying about for the sake of these really fleeting years. Like, yeah. um, and I think, you know, obviously we've, we've had a lot of, um, uh, you know, hard family things happen in mm-hmm. the past sort of six months or so as well, which has really sort of elevated that level of um being in tune with family and the babies and Mm. wanting to sort of give everything um and so I think yeah there's it's been a real real shift um and I don't feel like I did the first time it's just easier and you know a baby should sleep in a cot well we sleep in two separate beds, each with a kid. Um, and, like, ah, it's just, it's easier. It yeah. it all feels easier, but I think that's because I've fully let go of the expectation of yeah. how it should be because yeah. um, there's no right or wrong. No, it's easier because you're just going along with what is and not project yeah. what should be or why aren't I getting it right or what's wrong with my baby. These are these are the traps that new new mothers fall into. No, no, let me rephrase that. It's not a trap. It's a it's a path that you've got to walk where you maintain control for as long as you can. And if you just allow your baby to teach you, it doesn't take too long for them to let you know that you cannot control them. 
You can influence, yeah. you can create the right conditions for them to sleep. You can do a lot of things, but they are who they are. And the quicker you get on board with that, the better. So it sounds like, and I really love your story for this, Phoebe, because it's that process of change that I watch women go through. And it is ultimately a letting go. It's a letting go of what should be and and just sort of leaning into what is. Yeah. yeah. That's and amazing. I think even with, um, you know, we obviously had all of the, silent reflux and allergies and Mm -hmm. horrendous time um when evie was a baby and then the knowledge like knowledge is power yeah and then you know we could have easily had the exact same thing this time around and i think even you know those two experiences just having not only the knowledge but feeling like you you do know what you're talking about and you're yeah. not a first-time mum, which is often the question you get asked when you walk into the yeah. doctor's consults and um, to sort of be able to say, no, this is what's happening and mm. it's not okay and it's not normal. And, yeah, I think it's just it's changed things so much. Mm, power of experience um, and knowledge. Yeah. What yeah. did you learn about yourself then? Oh, well, I don't know, pretty fucking good. (laughs) Um, (laughs) uh, No, I shouldn't speak like that. But I I think my husband's always at me for committing to, you know, try and really stick to doing things, um, especially when it comes to, you know, like meditation or um, the the um, practices and that sort of thing Mm. and I think I just really learned that um, I didn't know myself as well as I thought I did and um, yeah I think I just learned to trust myself and my intuition and that you know that's far more important than any book or anything can really tell you Um, absolutely it's yeah experience of life yeah yeah Mm. beautiful what would you tell a pregnant woman so much um i think knowledge is power Mm. and ignorance is far from bliss <laughs> I think it's just do everything you can to you know if, if you're wanting to go for a vaginal birth to get yourself there mentally and physically like the, the mental part is far more than the physical mm. um, and just to trust yourself and do everything your way it doesn't matter mm. in terms of you know, after the birth, you know, kids are different and they're not, you know, they're not all going to sleep at the same time for the same amount of time and mm. eat the same foods and mm. they all get there eventually. This whole um, interview is just making my heart smile. I've been blessed to watch Phoebe go through this process both times and watch these changes and and feel that um, solidness inside of her about being more in her confidence, in her intuition, in her ability to roll with what is, is just superb to watch. Phoebe's story is powerful because it shows us that, you know, no birth is ever in vain, things that unfold where we think, oh, gosh, I'd hate to go through that. And then when we go through it, we can do it. We, we can overcome things. We can get through things. And each birth sets you up for the next experience if you choose to have more children and you're blessed to, to conceive more children. But no experience is ever in vain. I loved also how Phoebe talked about the mind, the power of the mind, and how she really got it online for her second birth. And when the, things got really tough, it was that belief, no, you can do this, that started to um, guide her thinking right at the point when she needed it the most. 
and she's got some great advice for for um what she learned and and how she would talk to a pregnant woman so i hope you've enjoyed this interview today it's been a treat to be with you again phoebe and just letting everybody know that next week's interview will actually be with phoebe's um midwife her name is ali and ali is a, a doctor she's a doctor of midwifery um, and she's going to talk to us about continuity of care and the different models of care and what they actually mean when you take different models of care. So that's going to be a great conversation for you also. Have a great week and we'll see you again. Thank you, Phoebe. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Please subscribe and share this podcast. Transform Parenting is a childbirth and parenting education organisation that supports families through pregnancy all the way through the first seven years of parenting. Why not watch our free webinar on Keeping Relaxed and Excited About Birth, where we discuss the three most important things that will change a birth. You'll find us at our website on www.transformparenting.com.au. Thanks for listening.